opening week. I guess everybody's fired up. Um, looks like it'll be a nice weekend, beautiful weather all week. We've actually had a pretty good spring training after we got through the ice days and uh, three good weeks with our ball club. So we've learned a lot. Um, you know, trying to trying to figure out we got to, you know, that first week ends up being, a, I guess, eight games in ten days. You know, so after the next ten days, we'll probably know a lot about our ball club. And uh, we got a lot of things to figure out over time. I like where we're at. Um, we got some Knicks and, you know, maybe an arm or two who's, uh, maybe the volume's a little down right now. We'd like them to be a little higher, so they may not throw as much early on as, as normal. But uh, you know, nothing, nothing to really worry about. We'll just, you know, as we go through these next eight, eight games, you know, like I said, we, you know, you'll see a lot of different guys out there. Steve, so why was Nate Dome the right call for Friday night? That was really hard. We, you know, all three of them, and actually, you know, I got one or two who are pissed right now that that weren't in the weekend, which I, which I like. Um, I, I just Nate's been the most consistent all year, and, and I think that's uh, it's deserved a little bit. Um, but you know, all all three of them on the weekend right now, you know, is we got a chance with with Durangelo going a little bit later. You can watch him a little bit more with his you know lefts and rights and all that type of stuff. You can kind of figure it out a little bit more. But Durangelo's been really good in our scrimmages. But so is Nate. So is Cal. So is Colby Holcomb. Um, and then Lofton and, and Ligon are kind of on their way up, you know, trying to build up some volume. So we, we feel like we got some good candidates there. Robbie, what's been the main focus for Nate in the offseason transition into that <clears throat> potential, you know, Friday night guy for you every weekend? It's the development of all his pitches. You know, this time last year it was a big fastball, uh, and it was an average slider, and there was nothing else. And uh, it kind of caught up with him about halfway through the SEC play. You know, you go through the non SEC schedule. And there's just a difference. Uh, he's added a really good changeup. He's added a, a curveball, and you got a slider in there. The slider's a lot better now too. And he's worked on some real mechanical things. Him and Coach Parker have spent a lot of time and effort. Um, and, and Nate's a worker, so I, I think you know, building himself as a whole pitcher instead of just you know getting out of the reliever two pitch type of guy. Steph, what do you think was the biggest thing for Durangelo this off season to kind of get him ready for for sophomore year? For, you know, Durangelo hasn't pitched as much as most guys. And then all of a sudden he gets thrown in this, you know, world. Um, there was a lot of maturity last year just from pure experience and figuring out how to train himself as an ambidextrous pitcher. I think the biggest thing with Gerangelo has been, um, and it was a really high ratio last year when he flipped right to left and left to right, it didn't matter. You know, he'd be 1-0 on almost everybody. You know, and I think that's been, you know, the, when you get him down here and he's been out here throwing a pin here today, um, you know, when he's right-handed in the pen, he throws a ton of strikes. When he's left-handed in the pen, he throws a ton of strikes. He has to be really good at being able to, when he flips back and forth, I think that's been one of his biggest areas. And then it's just been, you know, the maturity of everything, just being able to compete, handle the moments, and, and those that type of stuff. John? Do you ever, like, think about maybe having him just throw righty or something just to, I, I don't know, like, th there's not that much of, like, evidence of guys throwing with both arms, I'm yeah. sure, in your experience. Like, have you ever – thought about having him just with one or is it you know has he been coming along so well from both that you're trying to just kind of keep it like that we've had talks about it you know uh, he, he wants to throw both and and like he told me coming here he said coach I picked here because y'all said I'd have that opportunity I do think you'll see him throw a little more right-handed than left-handed but this time last year he hadn't practiced he hadn't done it a lot in real games and so it was I don't know if you remember there was a I forgot what game it was in the middle of the season we made him maybe it was South Carolina and he just do right-handed, but he really had problems. He, he's past that piece. I think we, we do enough in our practice, enough in our bullpen. But there is conversation, and there's some team in probably the major leagues that's that may make him, and then some may not. So it, it just it depends on the organization. Um, I think he was up to 96 right-handed last week and was up to 93 left-handed. So he kind of been able to do both. Is um, I do think you'll see a little more right-handed than you did last year. Tanner? The catcher position has been something to watch during these scrimmages. What have you made of kind of that ongoing uh, situation, and especially Joe Powell here as a player? Yeah, um, man, we, that was a nice pickup. We were able to add Joe there over the holiday. You know, um, Johnny Long's been a nice pickup. Obviously, we have Ross. Ross is about a week or two behind. He's just coming back on off some stuff from from a catching side. So those two guys will catch the majority of the weekend. Uh, Joe Powell and Johnny Long, but. I think they can really catch and throw, and I think that's an area that we really improved in over last year. We've spent a lot of time on the run game. Our pitchers have done a better job, but also our, I think the talent of the that, – that's that's kind of their strength, Johnny and Joe. They're probably a little more defensive than they are offensive, even though they've been 
in our scrimmages, they've done a nice job offensively too. And in the past, they've been decent offensive players, but they're they're defensive first type of guys. And then Ross will be in the mix. Ross can play this weekend, but it's just we're trying to work him back a little bit. Bobby, do you anticipate? Uh, I got two questions. Do you anticipate Ross being available to hit? And also, do you have an update on David Rashawn? Yeah, Ross will be available to hit this weekend. Um, Rashawn's day to day right now. It wasn't big, so it could you know. Uh, last year, on the same day, last oh, I think one of our last scrimmages, he put, but he did a really bad one last year. He's he's actually out on the field right now doing some stuff right now. I just got to be really careful. I don't need it to happen again. So um, with our depth there in the middle, hopefully we can we can make sure he's 100 percent ready to go when he comes back. Uh, but you know he heals pretty quick, and like I said, it wasn't the drasticness of like last year was a really bad one. So this one's not knock on wood, not so bad. Steve. What does Logan Kohler bring to your club? Well, that's a good question. He's a uh, mature kid. He's older. He's been around. He's played. Um, he's a really good defender, which I, I like. Um, and there's some real offense in there. I think him and Coach Goat have really clicked together. I think you're going to see a kid who can do some special things. And, uh, you know, he just, like I said, he's just a very well rounded, older, mature player. I think that's what you get out of the portal, you know, right now with some of those guys. You got some guys who've been around and done it. And, they get to a place like this, they're excited every day to come and play. Um, you know, because of, you know, you walk out here at the dude, how are you not excited? John? Kind of going off that, what excites you the most about this group with opening day just, uh, you know, a couple I, days away? I think it's the unknown a little bit. I, I think our guys have walked around with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. You know, there's not a lot of love, which we don't deserve any love. Um, we have to earn everything. And I think that's been the funnest part with this group is they're all, a little pissy, a little pissed off, and, and they just feel like they have something to prove. I mean, I, I think we have a lot of talent in that ball club, um, but we haven't played well, and we don't deserve anything right now. I mean, we, whatever we get, whatever we do, it has to be earned, and I, I think that's what you'll see with this group right now. How has Hunter de uh, developed defensively, and how do you feel about him at first base? He's been great. He's a super athletic kid. You know, he just, you know, behind some guys early in his career, so, but a lot more reps. Challenge is, is I don't want to look out there and see him taking practice swings in the middle of the innings on defense. You know, that's, you know, he loves to hit. And I, I joked with his parents this weekend at the, at the fan day, you know, he's in such a good mood when he gets a couple hits. You know, he is, you know, he just, he loves to hit. So that transitioning and just, hey, I put my helmet down, put my bat down, I got to go out and play defense. It's not a skill set. He can play. I mean, he's a very talented player that way. He can play in the outfield for us. I mean, he's an athletic kid. He's just, you know. If he has a bat at bat, I, I worry he's taking it out there and into the field. So, um, But that's that's very coachable. Steve? Obviously cool to see him as a guy that's uh, you got to pay attention to, but what else have you seen from Air Force? What do you expect from him this weekend? Well, you know, we um, we scheduled him a couple years ago, right, when they came out the, you know, they went to that Texas regional, played so well. Got to know Kaz over time. I'm obviously a military school kid. I'm also, uh, you know, I'm an Air Force. I'm born in Keesler, so... Uh, I've, I've actually enjoyed spending time with Kaz over the years. So knowing how hard their teams play, I think you're going to get a group in here. They have, I, I want to say, five or six of their position players back. So we're going to get a lot of their lineup, two All-Americans in that lineup. Um, and I, I think you're going to get a team that plays really, really hard. Trying to figure out what they are pitching-wise. I, I don't know if it's, you know, I can imagine playing in Colorado Springs. I'm sure your ERAs are a little higher than they should be. And, your slugging percentage may be a little higher just because the ball jumps. So I don't know. You know, you get a little bit of both there. But they've been really good. They play really tough schedules. I think they played in their championship game last year. They won it the year before and went to a regional. So it's a regional quality team. I mean, we have to show up and play really good baseball. Benjamin, have we talked a lot about the starters. Were you seeing uh, lately with the relief core, anyone who's uh, really stepped up there and pulled down? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, it's the same names for the most part, you know. Um, you know, Schulke's back there. He's had a good spring training. I think Brooks Auger's had a good spring training. Um, I think the lefties, I think that's one area that we, we really got a chance to be pretty good. Um, Tyler Davis, Cole Cheatham, uh, Luke Dotson, the two freshmen have had a really good. I just got to pick the right spots to get him and Nolan Stevens out there, you know, from the left-handed side. And Pico's coming. I mean, every every week Pico's a little bit closer. So, And I think that's where Pico will start at is in that, that bullpen side, which could give you a really, really special guy. Um, Stone Simmons is probably about a week away, so we're working with him. He's starting to build up volume. So uh, getting some, we just don't want to press and push too much. You know, L Lofton and um, Ligon, you know, the two two other starter type of candidates could be bullpen, you know. So 
Uh, and then Evan Sierra may be our, our best guy to this point. I mean, Evan Sierra's been, he was, you know, he won the, I forgot what league he was in, but he was the pitcher of the year in that league and throws a ton of strikes and had some really big moments for us last year. So there's a real depth to that side. We just don't have uh, the Landon Sims right now. I don't know if we're going to have a Landon Sims. I wish. I wish. He left the other day to go to spring training, and we had some interesting conversations because uh, I asked him if he wanted to come back and pitch a couple more. Um, but he, he joked and laughed because this is the week. It's a ton of meetings. You're trying to figure out your roster. And uh, he told me how pissed he was in 2021 when he wasn't a starter. You know? And he said, I'm still pissed. And so I told the team the story. Um, but I said, man, you're really good as a reliever that year, you know. So um, that's that's what we deal with this week. It's a, it's a lot of roles. So we're doing a lot of meetings. Um, I had kids before practice every day this week. I've had kids after practice. You know, it's uh, we're the only sport that has you know a roster that has to be turned in before the seat. You know, everything else. So we're having to sit down and make a lot of those decisions in, in the last couple of days.